All right, today I glued the ankle, final ankle greebles on. It's the ankle cylinders, the uh, triangular blue piece above it, and the, what is that, a quarter moon piece below it. Um, happy with the way they turned out after messing up my ankle cylinders. <laughs> um, the ankle cylinders on the center ankle are, are basically the same design. Silver on the ends and blue in the middle. And those I didn't have much of a problem with, but these I messed up. Uh, what I did was I painted them the same way. I had painted everything silver first. Right, the whole cylinder silver. And then I let it dry. Um, I let it dry for a week. I think I might have done two weeks on the ankle cylinders, or the center ankle cylinder. Uh, let these dry for a week. And then I masked off with the yellow Tamiya masking tape um, around where the blue goes in that indentation on both sides. And then I took some blue painter's tape on top of that. And I took some just printer paper with blue tape and added it on the end so that the paint, blue paint, and clear wouldn't land on any of this. So yellow strip of Tamiya tape, a strip of blue painter's tape, and then blue painter's tape and printer paper wrapped all the way around each end. So I sprayed the blue and that turned out great. So that was good, and then I sprayed, after about 10 minutes, I sprayed several coats of the clear. Um, I ended up doing that on one of them way too thick. Actually, both of them were probably too thick, because the problem I had was, after it had dried for uh, a day, I came back with... A hobby knife and I scored along the tape and then removed the tape so that because I cut it with a knife along the edge of the tape it wouldn't pull up the blue or the clear coat and that worked good but where I had the printer paper around the clear coat saturated that printer paper which then stuck to the metallic silver paint. So on one side of each ankle cylinder, this one and that one, I had an area very visible where the paint was not completely removed, but it, 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 it's more actually like um, the clear soaked in and kind of got into the silver so it was still silver but it was a discolored silver which if for a weathering effect it actually was kind of neat but you know if if I weather this it's going to be later and when I first build it it will be you know like it is now as close as I can get it to looking you know fairly new so what I ended up doing and I didn't know if it was going to work or if I was going to have to I was going to mess it up and have to resand everything and start all over. What I did was I left it for another week for the clear and the blue to dry and then I put the masking to my yellow masking tape and then blue painters tape to my masking tape, blue painter's tape, and then more blue painter's tape over the middle. So this whole blue area was covered with two pieces of the yellow Tamiya tape, and then the rest was blue painter's tape. And then I put, uh, I just taped a uh, copper wire, clothes hanger type of a thing on the back so I would have something to hold it by, and I resprayed the ends after just sanding from the indentation there between the blue and the silver, just from there on out, I 400 grit wet sanded where it was messed up to feather it out so you couldn't see the, the blob area. And it ended up working really good. I was able again to remove the tape 
and it didn't pull off um, any of the paint and it ended up saving the paint job. Um, one of the two cylinders has two runs on it because I put way too much clear on and it was running and then I was adding some more paint trying to get the run to the bottom because you can see here hopefully that there's a fair amount of the bottom of the blue and the silver the whole cylinder that's covered up by this piece so you can see how it wraps around the cylinder that's that's how much painted area it covers so one of those runs because I had it on a on a hanger I was able to you know hold it so that gravity was kind of pulling the paint down towards each side so one of the runs is underneath this white part down at the bottom of the cylinder and then there was another run on the top so I was able to make the run on the top starts inside where this triangular piece goes because it doesn't go all the way the same width of the blue that the blue is on the cylinder so it's that run starts about here and goes to about there but it's completely covered up and then the other one has a run just along the bottom of the cylinder which when I say bottom of the cylinder um, you can see right there where that curved piece is that's the bottom of the cylinder so it's it's a cylinder only on the ends and then it's got a flat part in the middle it sits on the uh, ankle so the run was down low on the blue part and this completely covers it so the two whichever ankle it was that had that problem I can't even remember now there it's the area is completely covered so you can't see it so that gives me the two ankles now the two as I just bump it into the overhead shelf so that gives me the ankle bracelets the legs the ankle bracelets the ankles the side details the cylinders the blue triangles and the moon pieces there so really happy there that I've got all of that stuff on there and glued as I keep like I said I just bump the side of this on the shelf up above me it's like every time I, I move something or assemble something I'm, I'm bumping it or something's going on so it's it's never gonna be look you know pristine right out of the factory but I'm I'm good with that I'm fine with that um, after my last video if you saw uh, called intermission I went to the Rose City Comic Con in Oregon about a three and a half hour drive each way and got in and uh, Sylvester McCoy uh, who played the seventh doctor in the classic Doctor Who series was there signing autographs so I had him sign an autograph for me and the Northwest R2D2 Builders Club was there uh, several members from the club with several droids and so I was able to talk to them for almost two hours talk to different members looked at their droids and just great work and it really emphasized to me that once you've got your droid together no one's even noticing any little tiny flaws that you might have or scratches or dings or whatever it's you're just you're looking at an r2 droid or r5 or whatever droid it is as a whole you're not concentrating on the individual pieces like you are when you're a builder and you're in the middle of building one and, you know, it's like, okay, I'm trying to get this cylinder absolutely perfect. I want this cylinder to be perfect because I'm, I'm, you know, five, six inches away from the cylinder working on this cylinder. But once it's on there and he's on his feet, it's, you know, several feet below you and no one's going to notice a little tiny scratch or a little tiny bit of the silver paint that's not quite perfectly, you know, straight or whatever. So it's I'm getting into that mindset now where I'm I'm kind of relaxing about the oh crap there's another little another little bump that once I get it together I might have to you know throw a little bit of touch up paint on or whatever. Um, as far as 
what I had planned to do to the legs. The only other thing that I planned to do this year, because I wanted to get him on his feet, was to put uh, these details in. There's two on each side, two legs, so that's four total. And there's a hole for filament, and there's a hole in the piece. So you can glue filament to the piece and filament in here and glue them in that way. Or you can run a screw from here through here and screw it into the piece. Um, the problem being, I kind of screwed up the holes when I was doing my finishing work on these, and I drilled new holes that aren't exactly the same as the original holes. I think mine are kind of going at an angle more like this and not like that. Or, no, actually mine are going a bit like this. But, yeah, I'm not getting something in there to tighten a screw. It's kind of a pain in the neck unless I enlarge that hole so maybe it passes uh, easily through that, but it screws into the detail part. So, I still haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to um, keep those in there, but right now all I've done is repainted those and they print in two halves and then you have to glue the two halves together and then finish them, sand them, paint them silver and then they go in here because um, I have a set that I painted in silver last year but I don't like the quality so I changed a couple settings of the ones came out fairly fairly smoother higher detail print and change in perimeters but I still need to glue so I've got eight pieces I need to glue them together so I end up with four parts and then sand and paint silver and then figure out how they're gonna go in here um, the horseshoes I have the horseshoes are painted white um, one of the things I was looking for at the convention was, and I didn't, didn't bring a horseshoe out here, obviously, but the inside of the horseshoes, um, they're grooved pieces because the original ones were made out of, um, either made out of or made to appear like several individual pieces of aluminum. And so once there's a, well, there's grooves in it. And some, I've seen some people where they paint just inside the grooves and the protruding um, layers are just painted white or some just leave everything white or some, they're all bare aluminum. And I still am kind of on the fence of what I'm gonna do. I think maybe I will just leave them all white because it's it was really hard to get a photo online that shows clearly um, what they were in the movies. The only pictures are ones where it's the camera's like really up close. There's only a couple because the shadows from the horseshoes and everything, um, it's hard to tell from the movies. And then when I saw them in person, it's even hard to tell there. You really have to walk up and look at them to see what's inside here. If it's just shadow making it look darker or if it was um, bare aluminum. And the ones that I looked at all seemed to be um, just painted white and it looked fine. So I think that's what I'll probably go with because it's, well, one thing, it's less work. It means I don't have to paint any silver on them. But haven't quite positively made up my mind on that. Uh, the booster covers that go right here. Um, those I started working on last year and I've sanded the plastic parts, I added filler, I primed, or sanded the filler, primed, sanded the primer, and that's where they're at now. So they do need at, at least probably two more rounds of filler and primer to be ready to paint. But because they just attach with magnets, um, I'm not really worried again about the fact that I, this is necessary to get him on his feet, but these can be done next year or whatever, and then just magnet slot in. I don't have to take anything apart to put those pieces on. Same thing with these hub pieces, silver hub pieces that go in here, and then there's a flat piece that screws down and keeps that silver hub piece in there. 
and the horseshoes have buttons and a cylinder detail greeble in them and I haven't done anything with those I printed them but I haven't finished it because they're not necessary to get the legs on so this I did I wanted to do because that would be harder to put on once he's on his feet because again I've said it I'm starting to repeat myself here once he's on his feet like this trying to get those pieces on you're gonna be you know on the ground well actually it'd be up in the air a bit because it's gonna be on the foot shell but you're kind of down low working on putting those in and so that only made sense to me to get those parts done now before attaching them to the drive motors and the foot shells but there they are and I am really happy with them again personal choice you can see the colors here um, different people choose different things to do I chose blue in these recessed areas nothing in this recessed area and no paint in this recessed area it's different when you watch the films different films have different variations of those notches sometimes there's no notches sometimes they're there but there's no paint sometimes there's paint inside this uh, silver bit sometimes there's paint here and so this is just what I chose to do it's a combination of there are multiple things going on but it wasn't full-blown you know every recess is colored I think it I think it works fine because you've got the white again the white of the ankle the blue of the details and the blue part of this thing that kind of draw you in and I don't really think it that you really need those extra pieces with a different color combination because uh, your eyes are already drawn in to the blue and the silver there but that's just again that's a personal thing and everybody can do it differently um, but that's what I chose to do obviously so yeah, uh, here we go. Extremely happy with the clear coat. I put on way too much, but it is, I mean, that is several coats of the Rust-Oleum um, gloss clear, and there's no wet sanding or anything on top of that. That's just, I had laid the blue paint down, waited about 10 minutes, and then sprayed the clear. And it's really smooth and And then once you look at it with the light hitting it, and you can start to see that metal flake of that uh, Ford Sonic Blue Pearl paint. Um, yeah, it just looks really, really pops, really does look nice compared to this, which is just the blue paint with no clear coat. So now I can see how um, when people say that the clear coat makes the blue pop you can see there that's just the blue paint and there's the blue with the clear and it just takes it to that next that next level where it makes it look more like an automotive finish so you think to yourself wow that looks you know is that a metal piece that's been painted because it looks so nice and smooth and shiny as opposed to more of the eh, just kind of semi-gloss I'll say of the of the paint just by itself there so there we are uh, update for today is assembly um, didn't really didn't well didn't really didn't get anything done painting or prep wise with other parts today um, I figured this was enough to get to the, done today and I've also started working a little bit on the center ankle which I'll make a video on that after my fix attempt and I decide uh, how to best fix the issue I'm having with my center foot. So before I get way too long, which I'm already almost there, thanks for watching.